My name is Jeremy Jenneretz and I'm a PhD student uh, in the Virginia Tech Fish and Wildlife Department of Conservation. Uh, and I'm here in the Adriatic Sea on the Vessel Tay Strip. So I'm looking at uh, remote monitoring techniques focused on uh, the extraction and collection of environmental DNA. We're here at the Adriatic Sea, uh, just at the opening of the Adriatic, at Station 1, deploying the Niskin bottle to collect environmental DNA. It's an innovative and new approach that is useful for detecting cryptic and elusive animals, such as the critically endangered Mediterranean white shark. Here we're going to deploy this bottle at 30 meters of depth, uh, collect some water, bring it back up, filter it, and do some more genetic processing, and hopefully we can detect these animals We set out on this expedition in the Adriatic Sea to uh, understand where environmental DNA is likely to aggregate. And so I developed a preliminary model to seed environmental DNA particles, uh, follow its trajectory through time and space, and just understand where eDNA is likely to aggregate and where the highest densities will be. Environmental DNA is influenced by several different factors that are put into this model. As a result of this model is a distribution map of the environmental DNA density throughout the Adriatic Sea. And from this map, I was able to develop two transects. Um, each transect has four stations that we deploy the Niskan bottle three times at. Lower and down. We're out here at station three in the dead of night. It's about uh, 12.20 a.m. So here we are continuing our environmental DNA adventure. We're uh, right in the middle of the Adriatic between uh, the Croatian and Italian coasts. Uh, we're looking at our fourth station, the last station in our first uh, transect. So let's lower it down. Collect some more water. So now that we have collected our water samples from the field, we're gonna go into our wet lab, um, begin filtering through this device. This is a 0.22 uh, micron Sterevex filter unit uh, with compressed filter paper. We're gonna run the water through it, catch some DNA, um, and then we're gonna take it back to our laboratories back in Virginia and then um, do some genetic processing and hopefully we'll find uh, what we're looking for, white shark DNA. So we're just going to uptake about 50 milliliters of seawater. And that's done and then we're going to screw it onto our filter unit. And as this runs through, this can be discarded. So we'll just fill the unit, compress it, and we're going to do this a lot. So it's going to be a lot of water filtering, a lot of water th uh, running through this filter unit. So it's going to take a little bit, but the benefit of that is we're running as much DNA through it as possible. One of the interesting things I've seen during this expedition is actually the, uh, the moon pool. So this boat, uh, the Belgian uh, Tastry, uh, built in the late 1980s, was originally commissioned as a research vessel for the Belgian government. And they put a really cool research utility mechanism in the hull of the boat. It's basically a shaft that goes down to the water and it's used to deploy different uh, scientific instruments. And it's actually very useful for deploying the Niskan bottle that I spoke about. The research that I'm doing here is very important because we need to utilize every different method uh, available to us in order to increase conservation of the critically endangered Mediterranean white shark. I'd really like to thank the Seakeeper Society and Discovery Yacht Taste Trip for allowing me to come on board and, and just being such gracious hosts and allowing me and facilitating the scientific research that I've been doing on this vessel. 